My name is Chantal Biladeau. I am the artistic director of the Arts and Climate Initiative, which um, for those of you who don't know, is a New York based organization that uses storytelling and live performance to foster dialogue about our global climate crisis, create an empowering vision of the future and inspire people to take action. And of course, we are one of the co-organizers of Climate Change Theater Action. Um, I'm very happy that you are here today. Uh, please stay muted for the length of, the, of this meeting. And we will have a period of uh, question and answers where you, you'll be welcome to either write your questions in the chat or unmute yourself and um, speak your questions to the, either to us or to the participants who are going to present. Also, if you want to see live English captions, you can uh, click on show captions and you'll have a translation, uh, not translation, but a transcription. I am here with my two colleagues, so I want to first introduce you to Julia Levine, who, is, who works with me on the Arts and Climate Initiative. Thank you, Chantal. Um, yes, hello, everyone. As Chantal mentioned, I'm Julia, and I'm artistic producer of Arts and Climate Initiative. And I am speaking to you today from New York City, which is the ancestral land of the Lenape people. So I'd like to express my gratitude for their stewardship of this land and waters. And I pay my respects to the many diverse indigenous peoples still connected to these parts. Um, and so I welcome you to introduce yourself in the chat and let us know where you are joining in from. I'm gonna put that in the chat. Um, and I'd like to pass it over to Ian, our collaborator at CSPA. Hi, thanks, Julia. Um, I'm coming to you from uh, Takaranto, the uh, ancestral lands of the Haudenosaunee, Anishabe, the Wendat, and the Metis, where the current treaty holders are the Mississaugas of the Credit. And this area is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant to peaceably share the Great Lakes. And the CSPA, uh, which has been a partner with the CCTA um, in many of its iterations now, uh, is an organization here that provides research and training and consultancy services around sustainable development and re ecological responsibility for those working in arts and col uh, culture. Uh, in addition to the CSPA, uh, we do a lot of publishing. Uh, folks may have seen our quarterly uh, or subscribe to any one of our our knowledge network systems through social or email. Uh, we also are the host of the Creative Green Tools in Canada, a uh, carbon footprinting uh, platform specifically designed for the cultural sector, which we work with our partners, Joyce Bicycle, as well. Uh, and uh, myself, as an ecosonographer, helped to co-convene the companion eco-design charrette that we try to organize around the, the, uh, the CCTA plays each time, which always sort of manifests slightly differently where we attempt to at least start a design in each of the uh, for each of the 50 plays in each of the years uh, and so it's thr i'm thrilled to see the number of people that are involved and to, to see the the growing network uh chantal uh, may may mention this at one point, but um, we've been working very hard on creating a website that uh, reflects and supports uh, the type of network that has been created here better than the one that we've had before and we'll be launching with the festival this year. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll get a chance to uh, to reify uh, the sort of connections that we know that we're making here at the front end. Uh, and with that, I'll pass it back to Chantal. Thanks, Ian. And uh, we'll be probably calling on some of you to give us feedback about this new website, website when we launch. So quickly, what we're going to do today, um, we'll, we're going to go briefly through the guidelines on how to participate in CCTA. You'll hear from two teams who organize events in 2021, and then you'll have a chance to ask questions. So first, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, hold on just a second. And so many windows. All right. Okay. And 
So this year's, um, yeah, now I'm sharing my screen and I realize I can't see my notes anymore. So I'm going to tell you this from uh, memory. <laughs> uh, so Climate Change Theater Action is a uh, worldwide festival of short plays about the climate crisis uh, that happens every two years. And it's and it, the intent is to help communities um, create local and global uh, action on climate. I'm laughing at myself for not having my notes. Um, so every time we do CCTA, we have a theme. This year, the theme is All Good Things Must Begin, which is a journal entry from uh, science fiction author Octavia Butler. And we picked this theme. Uh, it was actually one of Ian's ideas, which um, I think was a very good idea because we've had so many responses from uh, playwrights who felt very inspired by the theme. So the theme was chosen because um, Octavia Butler, uh, of course, was very prescient, prescient. And when she wrote about uh, 30 years ago, she was already, uh, already writing about the climate crisis. And um, she was also somebody who was very um, dedicated to becoming a scientific a science fiction author. And so she was able to see, you know, ahead what where she wanted to go and then to just take the steps to get there. And that's a good example for um, the climate crisis where we have to see the world we want to create in order to get there. Um, CCTA, uh, which is the acronym we use for short for Climate Change Theater Action, runs from September uh, to December, September 17 to December 23 this year. Okay, so how does it work? Um, some of you are already familiar because I know there are a lot of people in the in the meeting today who have participated, but for those who are new, um, how does Climate Change Theater Action work? We, um, we provide a collection of 50 short plays written by playwrights who, re who represent all inhabited continents. So these are 50 short plays that are commissioned um, earlier. They were commissioned at the beginning of the year. Now we have them all. So we have this collection of 50 plays that is uh, ready to share with everyone. And, and these are new 50 plays every time we produce the festival. In exchange, we add anyone who wants to organize and present an event in their community to use uh, one or several plays from the collection and to present to, to present an event during the festival window, which is, as I said, sep September 17 to December 23. Um, and then we also ask to, since it's climate change theater action, to include an action as part of the event and we define an action as something that happens in addition to the theatrical experience that aims to either connect or galvanize, connect people or galvanize them towards um, climate action. Now, what is an event? Uh, we try to be as flexible as possible to make it very easy to anyone to participate. So an event can be a reading, a fully staged performance, a podcast, a film adaptation. And these are just a few examples of what people have done in the past. And of course, when you hear um, our guests uh, present about what they've done before, you'll hear about other um, examples. Mostly, uh, or mainly, I should say, these events can be something that requires no resources at all, or if you have access to resources, it can be something bigger, but there's really no um, limit on uh, what it is. Again, if we've had people read a few plays among a group of friends, you know, 10 groups of friends sitting together in a backyard, and we've had performances that have attracted 700 people. So it's everything is welcome. Um, it can be presented in a traditional venue, like a theater or in a classroom, on the streets, in a friend's backyard, as I've said. Um, we've had people present events in national parks, uh, sitting in kayaks on the water at the foot of a glacier. We've had really um, guerrilla style performances, um, site-specific performances. Any, again, anything is welcome. And actually, the more unusual, the more excited it makes us. <laughs> uh, an event is, some, is also something unique to you and your community. So while we provide the plays, um, 
any anything else can be included. So people have presented as part of conferences, um, as part of festivals. They have made the, you know they have made the event unique by adding. Sometimes they invite singers or they'll have a a visual arts exhibition at the same time. So it doesn't need to conform to any uh, predetermined uh, template. As long as it feels right to you and your community, we'll, we're happy to have that event. Uh, what is an action? I mentioned uh, we asked people to include an action as part of their event. So, in, with, in dealing with the climate crisis, people tend to feel overwhelmed, sometimes really disconnected um, or not know where to go. So, or what, you know, how to take action. So an action can be examples of what has been done in the past, a panel with scientists, a tabling fair, sharing local sustainability resources, pledging to embrace a plant-based diet. Um, this last one, the, the plant-based diet was something that a group of students did with their professor. They spent a whole semester studying their plays and then putting on an event. And at the end, they decided to pledge to go to a plant-based diet. And I saw, I visited that university, um, I think it was a year or two after they did the, their event and they were still um, committed to uh, not eating any meat products. So it was interesting. Um, any size, again, both big and small, these actions, you know, so there are people who have raised money in 2017 when there were a lot of hurricanes in the US, big hurricanes, people raised money for hurricane relief efforts. There are other communities who participated in tree planting initi initiatives. So sometimes these actions are really big and sometimes they're small. They're just um, somebody, you know, changing how some of their behavior or connecting with people in their community or joining a group that's already active. Um, some of the things that ha that has happened have happened in smaller communities is somebody in particular who was able to create a uh, working group. Uh, to work on climate issues. And that was gonna be part of um, the city's plan. So in small communities, sometimes you can have a bigger impact because people are more accessible, but again, whatever feels right to you. Uh, and as I said, the goal is to connect people with a supportive community and resource to take action. We've often hear from, we often hear from audiences that they are, really grateful for finding other people in their community who have the same concerns and are ready to take action because people still tend to feel isolated and and um you know it's it's something big to deal with so we need other people who are really um, supportive around us now the process to participate you can visit our website climate change theater actioncom <laughs> it's right in front of me climate change theater actioncom uh, you'll find uh, examples of what people have done in the past because there're a lot of uh, all of the actions have been recorded there and as Ian mentioned it's a little hard to navigate at the moment, but we, we have a new website coming up that will launch before the festival. So everything will be much more accessible. There's a list, a complete list of the guidelines as a PDF document on the website. So you can look at that too. And then email us at cta at artsandclimate.org and either I or Julia will get back to you and we'll send you a link to the place so you can read them and start to uh, envision what you might want to organize. Uh, we'll give you, yeah, in that email, we'll give you access to the plays. Um, we cannot, this is a question that has come up in the past, we cannot provide funding for events, but the plays are available royal free, royalty free during the festival. So you don't have to pay um, the playwrights during the festival window because we've commissioned them and, and we made an, an arrangement with them that the plays will be available for free during that time window. Um, and then once you, if you decide to organize an event, once you're ready, you send us info about your event. We help you publicize. It all goes on the website, the new website. Um, it We publicize on social media too. And um, we let as many people know 
we let people know as many people as we can know about the event. And then after the event, we, we contact you and ask for photos and a little bit of feedback. And that helps us um, be able to publicize more in between the different festivals. It helps us to um, be able to talk about what people have done and also to get a little bit of a sense of what worked and what didn't and if there's anything on our side that we could do better. And finally, the impact since we launched in 2015, there has been over 500 events in 30 countries. Approximately 7,000 artists have been involved in organizing these events. And we have reached uh, 50,000 audience members. As an example, organizers have included individual artists, theaters, universities, schools, environmental organizations, youth groups, faith, faith groups, and more. Um, and after each festival, the plays are published in an anthology so they can continue to circulate and people can read them and perform them. Um, one, one thing that is, uh, I think, significant with this program is that because it's within a certain time window, you know, these three months in the fall, anybody doing any one event which might feel small on it on its own you know if i mean i know we do a kickoff event in new york city every at the beginning of every festival and we draw anywhere between 100 and 200 uh audience members which you know can feel kind of small uh, compared to the, the the size of the climate crisis but when you have as many people, for example, in 2019, we had 225 events um, in something like 25 countries. So when you have all of these events happening at the same time, then it gets really um, encouraging because you feel like you're not just running alone uh, on your own path, but you have all these people really running around alongside you and it feels very much like a, a big movement. So I will stop here sharing my screen. Um, before we move uh, any further, I would like to know if there are any questions about this part, um, anyone, and you can either put it in the chat or um, you can raise your hand and um, we can, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. And, um, Julia, can you let me know if you see something? I will do. And we'll have another, we'll have more time to ask questions after our two presenters. So if you don't have anything now, we can move on. Okay. Um, and now I will be more coherent because I have access to my notes again. <laughs> so, Ian, I will pass it on to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some some moving of 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 spotlighting first. Here we go. Um, thanks, Chantal. I'm gonna move your spot right now. Um, and I'm gonna go away in a moment uh, as well, but I wanted to first introduce uh, Claire Priest, who is a multidisciplinary artist born uh, here, I would say here, because this is where I am on Turtle Island, uh, and is the daughter of European immigrants. She's worked with innovative creators across uh, this land, as well as in Germany, Lebanon, Switzerland, and Uganda. Claire is a recipient of the House Lighters of the Citadel Theater Award and has been nominated for the Pauline McGibbon Award, the John Hirsch Director Prize, the John Hirsch Director Award, and twice for the Gina Wilkinson Award. Uh, she enjoys acting and directing for theater and film, as well as creating live art pieces that she facilitates. Uh, Claire is the Artistic Director at Downstage uh, in Calgary slash Mokinsis, and I'll turn it over to Claire now to talk about uh, your experience with the CCTA. Thanks so much, Ian. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, so yes, my name is Claire Preuss, Preuss Like Choice. Uh, those coming in from Austria might already know that. It's uh, from that realm. Uh, anyway, um, yes, and I am here on Mokinstis, which is 
37 territory, home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, including the Siksika, Bagani, and Guyana First Nations, the Tsutina First Nation, and the Stony Dakota, which is comprised of the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. And this is also home to Métis region number three. Uh, I am the daughter of immigrants. Uh, you know, my mom came over after the war, uh, so it wasn't a second world war, so it wasn't a choice. And my dad came from Switzerland to have an experience. I've spent a lot of time close to Austria, so all of you out there, uh, my family comes from the Bodensee area, so very close to the Austrian border. Um, we at Downstage are huge uh, fans of this project. There's, we're a small and mighty team of five. We run out of Arts Commons, which was one of the largest arts organization like buildings in North America, uh, but we're the little tiny, um, we like to start up at Arts Commons. Uh, if the, for those of you that don't know, Calgary Mokinstis is in Alberta, which we call, and I see there's someone else from Texas maybe here. No, I'm not from Texas, but someone from Texas. Uh, we call it the Texas of the North often. It's a very, uh, really exciting province, really beautiful province. We're right on the edge of the Rockies and then the prairie to our east, but it's also a province that is uh, built on oil and gas industry. We have some of the largest um, oil sands in the world. And we just talked about this before the, the, the session started, that currently there are at least 96 active forest fires right now burning, and it is smoky outside. And so it's kind of wild that a lot of these, these oil um, infrastructures are currently surrounded by fire. So we definitely want to keep doing this. We started doing climate change theater action. It was actually Vicki Stroich, who was working at EcoTrust at the time, who got us connected with Chantel, and we're so thankful for that. Uh, we began in 2019 with a project called Lighting the Way, and we kind of used the, the overall climate change theater action theme that year for it. Um, we didn't know how it was going to go. I, it was, I was early to being in downstage. Uh, it was, I'd only started in 2018, but we knew it was important to our team, and we, we had a feeling that... It was a conversation that people were going to show up for in Calgary, and, and it was incredible. We had uh, sold out audiences for two nights. We could have easily packed our little tiny theater about 55 seats again and again for that. It was a lot of use. Oh, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to focus mostly on 2021, which was our last one, but I will show you. So as you can see, it's important to us to acknowledge the fact that we are, we are playing with this ongoing reality of oil. It's such an important part of the ecosystem here as far as people's you know livelihoods but also even talking to a lot of people who live and work in the oil industry here it's a real it's a real um there's a real pull and a real tension in people's beings so that's a, a beautiful piece of art from Sam Mendoza that we use for the 2021 climate change theater action so I'll just kind of give you a sense this is uh, Chantal Storm uh Storm Song Chenyon who's opening a that for us and I'll just give you a sense of the intimacy this was obviously pre-COVID um, of the staged reading so we we staged uh, we staged eight plays um, and the first year there were uh, yeah numerous actors involved I have a little bit more detail about the second year but you can kind of get a sense there you can see this big long table so the first act we had the this staged reading then we took a break and I would say almost almost 90% of the audience came back for the second act, which was the action piece. And that's um, the, the round table discussion, so, or the long table discussion, pardon me. So as you can see, there's a lot of youth sitting around the table. Uh, for those of you who haven't participated in the long table discussion, there are some sort of guidelines to it. And one of them is that you come to the table when you have something to discuss. And then when you feel ready to go back to the audience to listen, you go back. So it was a very active um, and engaged uh, conversation. And you can see the real generational spread. Um, and, and people really feeling like this is uh, an essential conversation. So after that first round, we were like, okay, this is amazing. Um, and then we started to have conversations with, with Immigrant Council for Arts Innovation. Uh, and, and we were like, hey, can we find a way that to, to collaborate on this project for 2021? And so we decided uh, that we would work with Immigrants Council for Arts Innovation, and that half of the artists will actually end up being more than half. We had 11 artists involved in our 2021, local artists involved in our 2021 um, experience. And then, of course, all the brilliant playwrights. We had eight playwright plays from around the world. And seven of the 11 were newcomer and immigrant artists. And then the other seven were sort of longer term established artists in, in, in Mokinstis. And I think that was really lovely because it was also it addressed the fact that so many people are being displaced by climate change. And, and that was something that really came out of the first, this first round of the long table discussions. So many people talked about coming to the, to the experience because they needed to just reconcile how climate change had affected even just where they are able to live. Um, 
Well, that was really, really successful the second round. And so we're going into, in November, 2023, we're going into our second collaboration with ICAI, Immigrant Council for Arts Innovation. And once again, there'll be a balance of newcomer and longer term established artists in, in Calgary. And I think that'll, it's just, it just stokes the, the conversation to a whole other level. So this was our 2021. It was, you know, obviously December 2021, we were still in the throes of COVID. It was a bit risky to do, but you can see there were a great number of people who came out. We did it over two nights once again. This time we're going to do three nights because we're back in our motel theater. We did it in a more proscenium sort of setting for because of the COVID thing that our motel theater is so little that we did in the engineered air theater. As you can see, it's again a staged reading, but very much staged. And, and it was it's wonderful to see <laughs> that you can guess if you know Nicolas Bion's piece, which one this is. Um, and then this is the one, listen to Vanessa Nakate, which uh, Mira Reyes is actually an incredible storyteller and has has practiced this type of storytelling in the past. So we were just lucky that she was like, let's do it this way. And we were like, yes, please. Um, and this is some more images from the staged reading. And then we ended up doing a panel discussion. Once again, as you can see, Subashini and Heather are both wearing their masks. Um, and that's Vicky on the left and Chantal kind of in the midst um, so yeah, we decided to have a panel discussion. Uh, Heather is a biochemical engineer, not the forefront of the climate conversation uh, in, in her area of expertise. Um, and then Subashini is an incredible youth leader uh, who's really engaged with, with the climate change. And she's gonna continue with us. Both of them are ongoing uh, connectors with, with Downstage and with our work. So um, yeah, so the, the way that we have approached the notion of action is really through those second acts. And always they're very well attended. People don't leave at intermission. They stay for them. They want to have the conversations. This coming year, we're going to go back a little bit to a model. Uh, well, we are going to go back to the long table discussion model. We found it really useful. Um, but we are going to have guests there and present to participate in the long table discussion so that we have folks who are in the conversation that are that's kind of their job and they ha they have some expertise for lack of a better word but some uh, institutional knowledge uh, around around climate um we're also working with uh, sunny drake on his international piece called climate change and other small talks so there's a lot of intertwining we also worked with uh, climate change theater action university of calgary and world stage design to share three 13 plays during world stage design. And those were actually fully staged outdoors at the UFC. And I think Ren Bryan's on the call, her piece when we did we did during that, um, that one, and that was incredible too. So we find it very nourishing. We find it very uh, important, the conversations that are being had. We have huge youth participation in, in this initiative and the conversations that are being had are so useful, I think, in, in both action and I, and and also just as you were saying before, Chantel, like not feeling isolated, feeling that there's a place that you can go and be honest about what's going on and the complexities of it, because it's not easy. And certainly in a in a city like Calgary, it is not an easy conversation, but we need to have it. It's absolutely um, critical. And thank goodness the city of Calgary, I think it was about a year ago, did acknowledge that we are living in the midst of a climate crisis and that Calgary is at the forefront of that as far as decisions we make regarding the oil and gas industry. So I don't know if that's my 10 minutes. Do I have a few more minutes to talk about stuff or? I yeah, you have a more. few, you have a few more minutes. Okay, cool. Uh, one of the things that I think is important is um, that we always make it either pay what you can model, or we make sure that there are lots of free tickets through our pay it forward program. I think we're going to go back to the pay, it, pay what you can model for, for this round. Um, yeah, just because we want it to be as accessible as possible. Um, we are also looking at the realities of, uh, how we can make it accessible in other ways as well. We have size accessible seating for audiences. Uh, we haven't had um, signed sign language interpretation, American Sign Language interpretation in the past, but we're looking to do that this year. And uh, yeah, so we're we're always like trying to find ways that more people can be included in the conversation. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. That we, I can tell you about the the process of, of doing it. I think it's 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 nice that it's staged readings. I like. Oh, I know. We this is actually we we tried we ended up doing it both times because we tried it both ways and we found it so so useful. So thank you to CCTA and all the playwrights because one of the things that was really lovely is that you have those sort of intro 
introductions to the plays and what inspired the plays before each piece. And we read those out so people know who wrote it from where they're coming in the world and kind of the impetus to write it. So that's actually a really important piece. If there's any other playwrights on today, I think that's such a lovely part of it. And we've decided to keep that and we will certainly keep it going forward as well. So to kind of contextualize um, the international reality of, of what we're offering. Yeah. Maybe I'll leave it there. I have so much I could say about this program. I feel very, very thankful. And uh, it's so great to gather with all of you to know that there are people around the globe that are concerned and want to take action in an artful way from the heart. Thanks. Thank you, Claire. Yes, um, thank you so much, Claire. Um, we're now going to transition to our next presentation. Um, just going to also add some spotlights. Um, oh, thanks, Anne. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce Nassim and Shauna. So Nassim Belastrini is a full professor of American Studies and Intermediality at the University of Graz, Austria, and director of the Center for Intermediality Studies. She researches and teaches U.S. American and Canadian literature and cultures from the 18th century to the present. Her publications address adaptation and intermediality, life writing, hip hop culture, contemporary poetry, eco-criticism, and climate change theater. She favors comparative and interdisciplinary approaches to her research, which frequently cuts across literary genres, media, ethnicities, and cultures. And her 2021 collaborator, Shana Bistock. Did I pronounce that correctly? Bistock? Sorry. It's all good. It's best dog. <laughs> best dog. Thank you. Um, is an artist and educator and director born and raised in Seattle, Washington. She has directed over 200 productions with youth ensembles, produced over 120 professional productions, and worked with a wide variety of regional theaters, schools, and community organizations. For 17 years, Shauna served as the Artistic and Education Director for Seattle Public Theater, building a unique youth theater program and a home for exciting regional premieres. Shauna is the founding producing artistic director of Penguin Productions, facilitating creative adventures and community arts with a focus on youth leadership and social justice. She currently serves at ACT Contemporary Theaters Artistic Associate Education. Oh, she currently serves, yeah, at, at Contemporary Theaters Artistic Associate Education and Engagement. Um, and Nassim and Shauna, again, collaborated in 2021 at the University of Graz, Austria, on their event, Deal Me a New Green. And I know some of the students that were involved in that event are here today as well. So Nassim and Shauna, I will pass it over to you. Thanks so much, Julia. Um, we're going to split our 10 minutes, and uh, I'm going to take the first five, and then Nassim and um, uh Andrea and Nina are here, and which I'm so excited about, are going to talk uh, too. Um, I just want to start by saying, is uh, I don't know if any of you have had this experience. It's very weird to hear your bio read aloud, um, it, because I think all of us, it, those of us who work in theater, it, 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 we're so in the trenches. Um, it's really uh, lovely to pull back and go, oh, right, I did that. I do that. That sounds very cool, um, because when we're doing it, uh, it's a messy, <laughs> it's a total mess. So um, I really appreciate that. Um, I came to the CCTA, uh, well, and in an odd way. Um, I had left Seattle Public Theater, my longtime home. Um, I had been traveling uh, and had, uh, and which had opened up worlds of creative inquiry and exploration to me that I hadn't had because I'd been so focused on building a theater. Um, and, but I was ready to come home and bring those things together, um, the sense of travel and my theater practice. Uh, and I Googled, um, I was bored house sitting in Italy and I Googled climate change theater and I found the CCTA. Uh, and I reached out to Chantal and sparked um, a conversation. As you know, Chantal is amazing at response um, and, and engagement. Um, and I immediately felt welcomed into this community that I had yet to meet. 
Uh, and then uh, I, a friend of mine alerted me to the Fulbright Specialist Program, which now I alert you to. It's a program, um, it's a Fulbright program that is really geared towards like doctors and lawyers and people with <laughs> people with real skills um, to go around the world and share their skills for two to six weeks um, in countries in need. But they also take artists. Uh, and I applied and somehow got on the roster. And once I was on the roster, I went back to Chantal and I said, I have this grant. And now I need to connect with somebody who's interested in partnering with me. And she suggested Nassim. And I reached out to Nassim and again, was a um, was so impressed with the speed and specificity with which Nassim um, uh, got back to me and had some ideas. And so we started this collaboration. Um, so that's how I got involved with the CCTA. And I think it's a, just a really great example of how this festival is such a great vehicle for wherever you wanna go, that it offers so many types of cars in, with which it, to get into and drive to where it is that you're trying to get to, right? And in doing so, it, um, it also brings us all together. Uh, I was um, desperate for uh, finding ways in which to address my um, climate grief and dread um, and terror uh, with my artistic practice. Um, Seattle, where I am from, is a city that is profoundly seemingly engaged in the climate crisis politically. Um, we're a very liberal city. Um, we've got a lot of action going on and artistically, not so much. Uh, and so one of the things that this project did was, was give me some tools to bring back um, to this community, which I can talk about later. Uh, I think one of the greatest things I learned though, in partnership with Nassim and her fantastic program and her students um, was this, uh, was the relationship between theater practice and theater academics. Uh, I encountered a bunch of brilliant people who work with these plays in, a, in an academic setting and working, uh, bridging that, bringing those things together of putting on the plays uh, and talking about the plays academically gave me a really... Um, beautiful new understanding of my own craft uh, and also a real insight um, into, sparked a lot of curiosity for me and opened up a lot of insight into other storytelling genres, if you will, of these other ways that we tell stories and, um, and dive into our world uh, um, intellectually. So that was, that was really wonderful. And I know I'm talking to a bunch of playwrights in this room um, and, and thank you for your work. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't know if you think about this, if it matters to you, but I, that to me was such an exciting piece of this, um, of the way that the play worked, um, both as literature or academic inquiry and as theater practice. Uh, so anyway, I offer that up and in, into the room. And the other great thing about this project, uh, for me was the process of curation. Um, and I, Forgot to look at the time when I started. I'm probably at my five minutes because um, I love to talk. So <laughs> let me know. I'll try and wrap this up. But um, the process of curation, I think, is really an important one to to consider, um, and it's a great way to engage your community with um, either a community of artists or students or whoever it is that you're bringing in with it. If, if you look at these, you know, whatever fifty plays and you have to pick one or two or five. Um, we picked, I think, 10 um, to then- About a dozen, yeah. Yeah, to, to then to offer to students and then they narrowed it down. You learn so much about people by which play they wanna do and and why. And I, it's just, it's a really, it's a, such a gift um, to be able to engage in that process uh, that I think that that's one of the things that I really love about, about this. Um, all right, I will pass it over to Nassim. If there's any time left, I always have more to say, but um, all right. I'll pass it to you, Nassim. Yeah, thank you very much, Chantal and Julia and Ian for having Shauna and me here. Um, 
I, I've been putting on CCTA events since 2017, starting with a very small event in a seminar and then in 2019 cooperating with uh, our bilingual high school here in Graz and putting on a performance at an art gallery and then Shauna came into my life and we put on the project in 2021. So um, just to say something about the context in which we did this, um, I taught two literary studies seminars and um, surprised the students by confronting them with something that they usually don't get to do or are asked to do in our classes. So what were the highlights for me? Um, in addition to what Shauna already said, seeing my students ease into what it means to create and perform rather than analyze the dramatic text that was really exciting to observe. Um, I saw them do things that I think a lot of them thought they would never do or be capable of doing. And it was also for me, for me as an educator, it was wonderful to see moments of very strong group cohesion that were very different in the moments of creating something and performing something than they were in the classroom. And uh, last but not least, the positive audience responses that we had were really, really encouraging. Now, when we, when Sean and I prefer, prepared for this presentation, uh, we also talked about the question of what went, went wrong and what would we do differently next time. So the biggest thing that went wrong wasn't our fault, but because of the pandemic, we were only allowed to perform uh, our two sets of three plays each um, for, to other students and a couple of instructors rather than having a large public event. But that turned out to be wonderful because it was the same set of students that we performed for on two different days of the week. So they had the comparison between the two sets of performers, which led to really interesting discussions, I think. What would we do differently next time? Um, Shauna already said she was in Austria for six weeks. And I also uh, sent her to Innsbruck and Feldkirch and Vienna, so she was like everywhere, uh, really getting to know the Austrian train system, or the good signs and the not so good signs. <laughs> um, and what we realized is that it would probably be better next time to not just meet for 90 or, or 180 minutes, uh, but for long, longer chunks of time. So maybe have a project that is restricted to two or three sets of Fridays and Saturdays where people can get together and really work on the plays intensively. Uh, we would also want to invite students to uh, who want to participate in the actual classes into which the project would be integrated if we did this again, or also invite students who just want to be part of the CCTA performance and not necessarily take the class for credit. We would also invite people from other organizations, um, such as the local theaters. We did that to some extent very spontaneously. Um, there's also uh, a climate change research center in Graz that we would involve. And we would also invite the bilingual high school again, which this time didn't work out because of the pandemic and Shauna was not allowed to enter the school, unfortunately. Um, we would definitely have to find more ideal rehearsal and meeting places through our community partners. Uh, that's not something that I that was really uh, I was aware of. And I think that we would particularly um, advertise these classes to students who are becoming English teachers, um, because a lot of the students in both of the classes said that the experience with Shauna helped them think about how they would integrate theater into their English language classroom um, as well. Um, we also thought that it would be great to cooperate with the local youth theater in Graz called Next Liberty and to deepen our collaboration with the city theater, uh, which we tentatively connected with and um, during Shauna's stay. Um, Another idea would be to work with students from the art university in Graz, students who are training to become actors. In 2021, we had the chance to see their CCTA performance in the city theater, which was really exciting. But uh, if we had more time to prepare, it would be great to work with them as well. Um, and we would also use social media much more strongly to promote the class and the events. Now, Chantal also asked uh, to uh, say a few words about plans for the fall. Now, Nina is one of the students who was part of the uh, performances in 2021. And 
lucky for me, she's working for the department uh, right now. So Nina and I are preparing a performance uh, plus a panel discussion with people from the natural sciences. Um, so we're going to actually cooperate with the Climate Research Center in Graz. And after several months of negotiations, we've found a venue that is a large, very well-known um, venue in Graz, the Literaturhaus. And we will also participate in our university's Sustainability Day to make CCTA visible there as well. Then another student who's here, Andrea, who also participated in 2021, is one of the editors of Tint Journal. This is a journal for um, second English as a second language creative writers. And maybe she wants to say something about the event that Tint is also planning for CCTA in the fall. And I think the third student who is here is Michael. So if Michael wants to say something, uh, if there is time, then I would invite Nina, Andrea, or Michael, or all three of them to maybe uh, share their comments. Chantal, is there is there a minute for that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, then I'll turn it over to you, Andrea. I can see you. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me here. Also, Sean, it's amazing to see you again. I can't believe it's been so long. Um, I think um, they already said the most important things about our CCTA event, but what also I thought about while they talked about it is that it really brought the class closer together in a way that I haven't experienced before in a seminar. There was a different connection just with other students when you suddenly started to embody the text that you usually only read about. And also, because we're also only analyzing these texts from like the, um, yeah, we're really just analyzing them. We usually never think about how texts can be embodied, all the details about them. So for us to really participate in CCTA, it really put us out of our comfort zones. It was not something that we ever expected that we would actually take part in a play. But on the other hand, we really took away so much from it in a way that also helps us with our future research but also makes us appreciate, I think, theater as a whole more and also helped us engage with it, yeah. I don't know if Nina wants to say something as well. You did an amazing job summarizing this. Thank you, thank you Andrea. Um, I had the same experience and so I'm really grateful for this very transformative and enlightening, enlightening project and experience where I could both academically and creatively communicate the solutions to the climate crisis but it was also on a more academic and personal level. Um, I'm also very valuable for um, kind of regaining in a way this hope for that we are able to create strong and successful transdisciplinary collaboration. So yeah, it was a very, very good experience. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hope you can hear me. And I can only add to what my colleagues have said. It was a very perspective changing experience. And seeing you, Shauna, <laughs> again, makes me very nostalgic because I remember performing in the plays as well. I had a very serious time at the beginning because of what you've mentioned with climate grief or trauma what you're having, it's something I've struggled to deal with thinking about it in a positive way and you telling me to read this children's story we performed actually like a children's story was an experience that helped me take a different angle and also helped me writing or analyzing texts that covered this issue because I could suddenly see different meaning in there and so performing really helped me as a as a student of climate change literature to yeah learn new things it was also really fun i'm looking forward to having the project again in graz on an even bigger stage and i'm just impressed by the work you're doing thanks thank you nesim do you want to did you want to add something I just wanted to add that um, I'm putting a link in the chat. Uh, and if you wanna look at some of the pictures, there's a small slideshow of the performances and you'll recognize uh, Nina, Andrea and Michael when you look at that. 
Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Nassim, Shana, and Claire for such great presentations. And thank you, Nina, Andrea, and Michael also for chiming in. Uh, uh, Ian and Julia, would you like to come back in? I mean, even if you don't like, I'm asking you, can you come back in? <laughs> We're working on it. Come on. Okay. I'll bring everybody <laughs> and, back. Yes, and Claire too, if I can find her. Claire. Okay, I got her. You got clear. There we go. Okay, great. Um, so this is so great to hear. I mean, even for us, I think, and I'm speaking for all, all three of us, um, you know, we get a little bit of a feedback from the events, but hearing it in your own uh, words and the excitement and all the things that came uh, from from it, it's much more than just a play. It, what I'm getting is it's also about collaboration and extending um, knowledge in different ways. So thank you for sharing these experiences with us. I want to open it up to anyone in the room who would like to ask questions or have comments um, about what you just heard. If you have questions for the presenters, for us, please feel free to chime in. Um, I did have a question, which now I forgot. Oh, Shauna, actually, you said you want, if there was time, you wanted to add something. So you can go ahead. Yeah, while well, people are thinking of questions. So, um, I wish I could be in Graz again this fall, um, but that that did not work out. So I'm here in Seattle. I have this new position um, at ACT Theater, which is one of our major regional theaters um, with a focus on new work. And I had planned to do the CCTA as our uh, young core company. I've started a teen program um, at ACT uh, this fall. ACT is doing a new play festival of their own this fall um, with a, this focus on local new work. Um, at, there's a lot of stakes involved in this. Um, and it's been interesting. I just wanted to share it because it actually makes it more challenging to integrate the CCTA because I'm within a, a much larger institution. Penguin Productions is going to do something with the CCTA because we run it and it, it's loose and it's a community arts organ. It's easy to do. Act, there's all these other layers of the institutional theater. Uh, and I've gotten a question of, well, we can't do the CCTA because it'll take away from our own new play festival. And, and that's the challenge right now that I'm facing here um, in Seattle of how to integrate that and how to politically navigate the, <laughs> yes, you can, um, it really doesn't have to be one or the other. And how can we help them inform each other? Um, I haven't solved it yet, uh, but I just wanted to bring that to the table. Is that something I'm I'm working on and really leaning on my experience in Austria to help do that? Um, and really excited for the for the possibilities. There are so many playwrights, actors, directors in Seattle who are looking or starving for opportunity to come together, to collaborate, to be at a major institution like ACT because we're never going to hire them at that level. And I feel like the CCTA is a, an opportunity to open our doors. Um, I just need to convince other people. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you, Shauna. Like whatever like momentum you need behind you to like point to this huge um global festival happening. Um so we do have some questions starting to come in the chat. Um so I'll start with Shannon's question who writes um just wondering if anyone has any tips for engaging people and groups in their communities. Um, I haven't had the best of luck trying to get folks interested in getting involved to do environmental theater, I do have previous experience in other places, but my current community is rather conservative, not in the good way. So if any panelists want to, yeah, Claire. Or maybe I'll chime in just because, uh, I mean, Calgary tends to run very, very, very conservative. We'll see. We're about to go into a provincial election, go NDP. Anyway, um, <laughs> But uh, the thing that we found really useful, I mean, the youth for sure, like uh, we do have a student ambassador program at Downstage. So we definitely offered free tickets to everybody. I think free tickets to young people was really helpful. Um, we got a couple of youngsters who were involved in, in organizations that are 
you know, engaged with environment, that was helpful. I think also really connecting with um, ICAI, with Immigrant Council of Arts Innovation, for the immigrant and newcomer population was really huge. Oh, and you know who I didn't mention before, which was also really important, and I thank Kurt for reminding me, um, Ashley Bodigal and Vicky Stroich both came, were at the very beginning of the process, and so I think their communities, Ashley Bodigal through Pem Pembina Institute, and then Vicky Stroich through Ecotrust, so finding folks who are working at these organizations, who have other people that are interested in participating, and, and Shannon, I'm not sure how big your community is, but it might also be if it's if it's a smaller community, maybe there's ways that we can help with like online stuff or ways to connect with people in that sense. Certainly, we we do ever we have a pretty good relationship with the press here, so we did get some press um, and and social media. Social media is huge, especially with our young folks. Um, so that's definitely how we've we've been able to kind of engage interest. Um, yeah, those are some of the ways. Oh, and I do want to say as far as what we're planning to do better this year, when we we realized when we were working with um, Immigrant Council for Arts Innovation that folks where English is an additional language, maybe a third, maybe a fourth language even, need a little bit more time with the script. So it's great to have them reading, but to, we're giving more rehearsal time this, this round. So one more performance, but also significantly more rehearsal time. So if people feel comfortable speaking English, you know, in front of a crowd um, with text that they might not be super familiar with. Thanks. I was just going to quickly add that um, because I've had uh, not with CCTA, but with other environmental um, programs that I've tried here in Seattle, I've had youth who are um, engaged in environmental causes, but not wanting to do an eco theater. They're looking down on eco. It's not real theater. And, and I've, uh, I've had some success of just listening to what it is that they want out of a theater experience and um, and then using uh, the plays as a way into that. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful or not. Well, if I can add something to that, I mean, in the year when uh, I worked with the high school group, um, I think it really helped that uh, we selected plays that sometimes kind of talked about climate change indirectly. Um, so that kind of served the same purpose of what you just said, Shauna, so they see the larger context. And the interesting thing in the panel discussion with the students was that they felt, uh, yeah, we've been studying climate change in all our different subjects in geography, in physics, you know, in social sciences, etc. But talking about climate change through theater is something that for some of the students really brought the issues together in ways that they had not been able to kind of see them contextually. So I think um, if there is this prejudice against eco theater or environmental theater, maybe just you know using different terms to kind of get them interested uh, might be a way of um, getting them hooked, so to speak, on the text. And, and I think the students really were also astonished by how the experience of creating these plays and performing them in an art gallery um, struck them as meaningful. Thank you all. Yeah, Shannon, I hope that helps answer your question. And um, yeah, Kurt did put a link in the chat um, on this. Uh, question of narratives. Um, so thanks everybody for weighing in on that. Um, and our next question from Sydney, who is based in New York, um, talk a little bit more about the kickoff event in New York as you're currently based there and would love to hear more about it and get involved. That would be awesome. Um, so Chantal, I can speak super briefly. Yeah, on, you go ahead. Yeah. Um, in 2019, Chantal and I organized a um, stage reading event um, where we had some performances of plays and then a panel. And in 2021, we did um, an outdoor event in Central Park um, that was started because of COVID, but then um, we were able to um, have like a guided walking tour of um, plays kind of hidden around um, more wooded areas of the park um, with actor guides. Um, and now in 2023, we're gonna continue with the guided walking tour model. Um, 
to have uh, some events in in some parks. So Sydney, we would love to follow up with you. Um, and Chantal, I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, Sydney, just write to us at CCTA <laughs> at artsandclimate.org and, and we um, will talk more. Yeah. Um, and our next question um, from Olga um, about casting. Um, so um, as given that uh, these plays are international and indigenous, will playwrights make it clear whether or not these works can be performed by actors who do not identify with the roles or the authors, et cetera? Um, yeah. So in commissioning the plays this year, uh, a lot of playwrights already did that, but in commissioning the plays this year, I made sure that um, if it was not entirely clear that the playwrights would specify who can play each role. So there shouldn't be any questions, but if there are, you can also, you can always reach out to me or to the playwrights directly. The emails are usually on the script and um, confirm uh, who they, who they feel is appropriate for any given role. Yeah, and I don't know if um, any of the panelists want to speak to casting for your um, events. I, um, I, I can, s there was some uh, strong hesitation um, and some real sensitivity towards representation. Uh, that I felt opened up some really wonderful conversations. I don't think there are any um, short answers. Uh, I think it's um, it, it's a gift to be able to have that conversation. I would say you have to budget time for that conversation and <clears throat> and be responsive to to your community and also be thinking about um, what your the goals of the goals of your CCTA. Um, and, uh, and the people you're working with and the people um, with whom you are in, in community and collaboration. Uh, I do think it is very helpful for playwrights to be as specific as they, as they can with their, um, with their expectations so that we can honor their work. Uh, that, is, that is great. Maybe I can just uh, jump in here and briefly say that when one of my seminars selected Mija Khawad, I was about to faint because I thought, how are they going to perform this Native American myth? And of course, that's a general problem for Americanists who are interested in indigenous studies. If they're European, um, there are you know, certain uh, suspicions or potential misunderstandings can arise. I'm very grateful that we were allowed and that the playwright did not, you know, limit the, the casting options in that play, because as Shauna said, I think it allowed the students to engage with a text that is dealing with a story that is not from their own culture and develop a, a sensitive way of doing so. So I'm, I'm always happy when the playwrights um, give other people from other cultures, cultures the opportunity to do so if they deem it appropriate. Yeah, we certainly had that conversation as well. And if there were guidelines, did our best to honor them specifically. And then um, I'm thinking right now of like uh, Friends for Life. That was a that was a big one we had because I because with Ranger, Yvette Nolan's piece, we know of it. Nolan personally and could have that conversation. Um, but with something like uh, with Ranger Kamali's piece, um, I'm sorry, with Friends for Life, that was like, we had the conversation it had it wasn't there were not specific casting notes in it and we talked as a group about if not from that particular reality were there other folks who had dealt with water shortage and innovation and ways of, of finding that and just had had that as part of a community conversation and that did go into casting so it's certainly not perfect but um i i really think it's great if playwrights can be super specific i think that's that's very helpful thank you Yeah, thank you for that question, Olga, and uh, everybody weighing in. This is an important topic. 
do you um do any of you have uh I'm I'm imagining there might be some people in the room who have never organized events so do you have a um like any word of advice for somebody who's doing this for the first time my first thing is allow it to build momentum like the first round I mean we were very lucky that our first round was a big hit but we were also ready for it not to be and I think had it been very small, we would have still continued to to move forward with another round. So, I mean, allow it to build momentum. Small, small is great. It can spread over time. Um, obviously, funding is helpful, <laughs> uh, both for paying artists properly and also um, like for stuff like venue, but also for getting word out. Right? Like, it is amazing how um, just getting into your local listings that that can be some free stuff too. Like local listings, approaching um, maybe a student new newspapers or student radio stations about having an interview with you or those those kinds of things I, I think can be helpful um you can always reach out to me too I can put my email in the chat if you have questions about organizing your first event we are a small theater company but we are we do have a lot of you know support in terms of operational funding and we work full-time at our job so I'm happy to be of support if, if that's useful moving forward I'll put my thank you Claire Anyone else? Shana, I'm looking at you because you've done so many, <laughs> you've done so many events in all kinds of contexts. I'm wondering if you have something to share with somebody who might be new at this. So many events, so many contacts. Where to <laughs> begin? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I think there's there's always very specific hurdles, right? And there's specific um, uh, fears to starting, and there's specific economic hurdles to start starting. Um, the fears are easier sometimes to deal with than the economic hurdles. Um, I think that the beauty of the CCTA is that it, um, and, and I think you spoke to this, Chantal. It just can start so small and be, and I think that's the thing to hold on to is that it can be so successful at any level that they that we're dealing with this huge thing um, with very specific small stories. And we're developing this global connection through very hyper-local moments. Um, and that's, so to, to define success um, uh, in a way that feels attainable is very important. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of um, of making connections and uh, and reaching out, I think identifying the people in your sphere who are the easiest to get a hold of, who are the most responsive, and who wield the most influence. And sort of to look at those Venn diagrams of what other community organization already has a network that I can tap into and who in that community organization will, can I get a coffee with who would be excited about this, right? And sort of finding those, those nexus is, um, is a great place to start. Thank you. And, um... Ralph's just wrote for past CCTA that collaborated with a choreographer, composer, and visual artist. It made for a dynamic event, so don't be afraid to move beyond theater. People love to be asked for, to help. I think that's very true. Um, I would also offer that in the you know in the professional theater, we're used to thinking about the show, like what we present to audiences. Um, the process is also very important and sometimes if you depending on your context you know you you can let go a little bit of what the final product is and and focus on the process because all of these learning experiences especially for somebody who might be new to theater like just embodying a character um, digging deeply into text collaborating with other people that in itself is very valuable even though you know since they're not professional actors they may not we might not consider um or you know a critic might not consider this a good show um it doesn't matter because it's it speaks to this particular community and it's about the learning experience more than it is about the final presentation um, we have just a few. Yeah, and without in that regard. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Claire. 
I was just going to say in that regard, I think that I really appreciate how short the pieces are, because again, even though we work with professional theater um, makers, uh, if, if they have very different lived experiences with English, it's so nice to just have like little chunks. And it's also great for the audience because there's such a wide range of the interpretation of what that is that I think it makes it quite accessible for audiences who might be new to theater. And I love the idea of using um, what Ralph said about the about the idea of using movement and dance and visual art and, and doing it in a gallery, I think is brilliant. So yeah, all these different ways that we can maybe attract people. I think university settings attract people that might be new to theater or new to environmental theater, but um, eager to, to engage in other. Great, thank you. Um, we have just a few minutes, we have three minutes left. So I'm wondering if there's any like quick last word from each of you before we wrap up. Well, maybe I'll connect with what you just said about educational contexts, both of you. I think that for instance, in, in a field like, uh, you know, teaching American literature or teaching people who want to become English teachers, um, of course, they're not going to present professional productions of anything. But this semester, I'm teaching a class on community theater. And just reading a scene here and there with my students uh, changes the direction and the tone of the discussion. So um, I humbly try to sometimes do the things that Shauna taught us in my amateurish way. And I think there's so much that we've learned from each other and that we can still learn. So thank you. Thanks, Netsu. Uh, Shana or Claire, anything you'd like to add? Just to jump off, like, I feel, um, you know, we're all storytellers. We all tell stories. And this is a story that we're all living on some level or another. Like we are all on this rock thing, spinning through space together. So I totally agree to like, find as many ways of taking down the barriers of this idea of professional and what it has to be as a product and really focusing on the community gathering and the storytelling and how we can, because I think that's one of the things that arts can do so well is help us envision the future, help us envision the possible, help us envision what we want to step into. And um, and these kinds of activities and processes can help us kind of end that that fear, that that freezing fear that happens when you, you know, uh, when you don't see a possibility and watch too much of The Last of Us or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Shana? Uh, yeah, I'll just riff off of what Claire said, which is this idea of, of lived experience. And I think it ties into what we were talking about with representation too. Um, it, it, we all have lived experience of the climate and of change. And, um, and that's such a great place to start. Um, with saying to anybody who walks into your project, you have lived experience of the story that we're telling. It's a very empowering thing, I think, for a lot of, for, for everyone. Um, and the other thing is just to, you know, would celebrate theater as an art form, um, because it does allow for these incredible continuums of acting, directing, visual arts, technical arts, um, uh, and it does allow for this continuum of student, community, and professional. And I love sliding along that continuum. I love um, bringing all of those pieces together. I think the professional theater in the U.S. right now is really trying to slide not more towards a community um, format, or, but trying to bring the community ethos, if you will, um, into into its work, trying to be more community responsive and community aware. Uh, and I think that um, uh, that's a really exciting moment for us. Um, so I love uh, I love seeing that that happen. and um, and oh wait, oh, I wanted to quote, I can't remember who it was. It might be someone in this room. It might not be. But one of the quotes that we got from one of our students in reflections was, in order to become proactive, we should make hope our main fuel. And that is something that I have written down in a number of places in my life um, and carry with me. So hope is a good fuel. Thank you. Um, this is a beautiful place to end on. Uh, I just wanna read maybe um, 
somebody, Ingrid uh, from Austria wrote a comment, one of the greatest surprises and successes during CCTA 2021 was to contact the art teacher at the middle school connected to the teacher college where I teach. The class produced amazingly beautiful artwork, which we converted into PowerPoint slides and used in production. The student artists were present at the performance as well. So another example of collaboration. Um, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, Julia and Ian, any last words from you? I, I just wanted to highlight that also there are ways that aren't just putting on the plays to think about that as well as that like, we do host um, the last few rounds we've hosted the um, the eco design charrette along with it and I'd recognize some names for some folks who have participated in that as well so thinking about it that um, there are many different ways to engage with this I also uh, teach at a university where we just read them as contacts for uh, one of our class like thinking expansively about what you can actually do with them. They're there to be used, and there's not necessarily there to prescribe their use. Thank you. Julia? Nothing to add that hasn't <laughs> already been said. Thank you all so much for joining us and panelists for presenting and sharing your words of experience. And um, this is this is where it happens. And thank you to the playwrights who are in the room who um, so gratefully, uh, you know, share their talent and skills with us and created these beautiful stories that we can use. Um, contact us if you want to participate. We're hoping that now that we're past the pandemic, we can have a very um, successful 2023 event that is not ampered by all these rules about whether we can get together or not. Thank you for our wonderful um, guests for sharing what they did in 2021. And um, look out for this new website that's going to be coming out um, sometime this summer. So thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend and um, be in touch. Bye.